Good morning, everybody. I, I, my, my job here is to be a little bit radical. At least I hope so. So um, I, yeah, my only recommendation can be whatever I present, don't take it personally. Um, I'm prepared less well than I wish because um, today is actually the deadline um, to submit the new vision of what I'm going to present to the steering committee. So I was working on it until late last night, preparing for today. So this is really, you're about the first ones to see what the, what the vision looks like. So I'm really thrilled to do that. I'm absolutely not authorized to speak here because the vision hasn't been approved. So I'll show you something <laughs> that uh, my colleagues haven't even seen. So uh, I'll look forward to some feedback. Uh, please be critical. What we are, what we are hoping to do is um, try to say, like, well, business schools so far, and I could talk about this for hours. I'm not going to do that. Um, I find it a lot less interesting to look at the problems, and I find it more interesting to try and look at solutions. But business schools have traditionally been very much criticised for being uh, a part of the problem rather than a part of the solution. A little bit like business. So we said, well, you know, we, we, can, we can all complain about what business does and doesn't, but the only thing we can really um, change is we can change what we do as business schools. Um, and this initiative really started about uh, a year ago in August 2010 at the Academy of Management, which is a, a massive uh, event that I'm sure all of you are familiar with, uh, have about 15,000 academics meet once a year and um, do what academics do best, talk, <laughs> right? Um, now I have a little bit of a business background and talking is not exactly one of the things I find extremely satisfying for, a, for five or seven days in a row. Um, we met in Montreal and we remember back in 1992 the Rio Earth Summit had uh, created or had coincided, con coincided with the found uh, foundation of the World Business Council of Sustainable Development uh, in Switzerland. And we were kind of asking ourselves and said, well, wouldn't it have been the responsibility of business schools to have done something similar? Twenty years later, we still haven't. We still, as a business school community, we haven't organized. So we took a few deans in a, in a corner there, and we've created what we, what we call, and this is impossible to pronounce, and that's the intention, the World Business School Council for Sustainable Business. This is even more impossible to pronounce than the World Business, the World business Council for Sustainable Development. And the reason why we did it is basically to say, well, as a, as, a, as a connection to this World Business Council, to say we are late by 20 years. So there, I don't know to what degree, who is familiar with, is anybody familiar with the Carnegie Ford reports back in the late 50s? No. Uh, two very influential reports that were written um, in, um, in the US, looking at business schools back in the 50s, saying, well, at that point, business schools, the role was to develop professionals for the world. And uh, business schools were really the underdogs, as you all know, compared to the economic professors and, uh, and the departments uh, of, real, of, real, of real academy, of the, the so-called science. Uh, business, school, business, was still, business schools were still pretty much considered an art at that point. And I said, well, we need to study business more. We need to study marketing and finance and HR and strategy and all of these different fields. And this set up what the business school today is, is much about, um, silo-based, um, research, teaching as well. Um, we, we look at, we look, we, we started to digest, dissect business in its different sections, and that was probably a really good idea back in the 50s. But today we are at a point where this has become very unhealthy, because we don't really look at interdisciplinary, not even to talk about transdisciplinary work anymore. So we said, well, basically it's time to to create another high impact report, and to to make sure that the pendulum swings back in the other way. And for that, we need to be not a little bit different, we need to be radically different so that, the, that, we, can, that we can attract the pendulum to swing back. At the same time, we met with um, GRLI, the Globally Responsible Leadership Initiative out of Brussels. They were in the middle of writing what they called the SP21, and you can imagine why they didn't call it the BS21, so they called it the School of Business, um, for obvious reasons. Um, and they were basically trying to do the same thing. So like, what, could, what about if we designed a business school <coughs> that is relevant for the future? And then the third party is uh, PRIME, which is UN Back through Glo UN Global Compact, the Principles of Responsible Management. They are a group that, very much like UN Global Compact, tries to sign up as many business schools as possible who say they care about sustainability. 
They have about 350 schools signed up today. Their goal is to have about 1,000 signed up by 2015. And make sure that this, this group of about 1,000 business schools starts to move in the direction of sustainability. Right? So they're, they're taking a, that they're trying to kind of make it, it's very easy to sign up to this. And then they say like, well, let's now together start the journey towards sustainability at the business school. Whereas um, together, so with this 50 plus 20, uh, initiative, we started a report saying, well, let's try and be as radical as we can. And of course, we're the wrong people to be radical because as deans and, and professors at business schools, how radical can we be questioning ourselves? Hmm. Well, that's, kind of, that's kind of our challenge. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so like we call it 50 plus 20, 50 for, to say it's been 50 years since something major has happened in, in business schools. And plus 20 referring to the upcoming Rio conference uh, next, uh, next June in Rio de Janeiro, honoring the original Rio conference in 92, Rio plus 20, um, and where we will uh, present our report. So that a little bit is background. Um, we started with a very simple assumption that not many people seem to agree with. So like we live on one planet, can we please agree on that? And uh, this really comes out of, uh, this is not uh, us who invented that, it's uh, really WWF has made a very strong point with the Living Planet report on this that they measure on an annual basis the resource usage of the planets, and I'm sure you're all familiar with that if you are in the field of sustainability. I think it's about August 21st uh, every year, or it's, the date is moving forward, by, by which time we will have used this, the, the, the resources of the planet before we start pretending to use kind of the second planet that we don't really have, but we start to use the resources of, a, of another planet. Um, Basically, what we're saying is we can, we can of course, self-criticize ourselves, but we can also look at the environment around us, around business schools, where we say, like, the world has really changed for the last 50 years. We are now in a situation where we have globalization of markets and players. Uh, there is an emergence of the global climate and biodiversity resource crisis. There are shifts in society, I think, um, clearer, clearer than ever, even, even since we have started now with the Arab Spring and everything. Um, Entire, the, the, rise, the rise of internet and mobile communication, which is uh, dramatically changing uh, the interconnectedness of, of the world. And um, we need a new perspective for the future. And the, we find that the World Business Council for Sustainable Development has come up with something really useful. They have come up with a really simple vision of where we want to be by 2050. They said, we got, at that point, we're now, we're now just about at 7 billion. I think, what, 10 days ago, we had the 7 billion uh, Earth citizen born. By 2050, we'll be at 9 billion. And we said, like, these 9 billion people need to live well and within the, re uh, within the uh, limits of the planet. It's as simple as that. We, we, are, we are a community of global citizens. All of us should be living well. That means out of poverty. And within the limits of the planet, well, let's agree we have one and not five. Because if you all behave like the US or, or, or Western Europe, we're going to need uh, countless planets by 2050. And we don't really. Um, which means that we have to address a whole bunch of issues differently, which I think is the whole point of the conference here today. Um, and he said, well, if that is really so, then we need to look at what we can do as management edu educators in terms of providing then le leaders and research and an institution that, that, uh, that serves this purpose. So we started at the top. We said, let's agree we have one planet. Let's look at what kind of a society we want in order to live in that planet. As a result, we need to look, and this becomes a little difficult, we need to look at what is the purpose of business. Does business have, or what is the society of, what is the, what is the responsibility of business for society? For the moment, business is, is basically a slave to, to shareholders, mostly. But there, is, there is a very limited, or the way the business measures it, its contribution to business is by the, the increase in value it creates for shareholders. It's a very limited perspective that business takes to its contribution to society. <coughs> And if we therefore change that purpose, what does that mean in terms of what, we, what leaders we need to educate? And if we need new leaders, then what kind of new business schools do we need? So that's kind of how we started about this. Um, and in order to change this, there's, this is a slide I just want to quickly go, go through. So we came up with um, realigning or defining what, what business needs to do. And um, there's, a, there's a few things here that that, um, that has an impact for business schools. One is specifically, we said, 
it's not only business that we need to, leaders in business we need to educate. We need to also educate leaders in any other organizations. The boundaries are blurring between profit and not for profit, and NGOs and uh, and, and government organizations are looking for a more professional management as well. Um, we need to look at, we need to rethink some, some of what we call flawed assumptions around growth, target audience, motivation, contribution, values, earnings, and so forth. Growth is probably the most provocative ones. Uh, ones you're, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with the degrowth initiatives that, uh, that are happening around the world, where we say, like, if we continue to grow like we do, well, that one planet theory doesn't really work. Um, we basically say, well, we cannot do this alone. Business also needs to help on this and say, well, organizations of all forms and shapes need to contribute to the, to the, to the, to the well-being of the planet, which is really always a, a triple responsibility if you look at it from a sustainable, sustainability perspective, uh, environment, society, societal, and, and, uh, and economic uh, dimensions. Um, the interesting thing for us in terms of business is that we, we believe nobody is really better suited than business to make that difference happen. Because today, with, with national governments, and we see the limitations of the UN, of course, unfortunately, as well. We've just seen, I don't know whether you followed, this was an interesting uh, uh, dilemma that just occurred this week. Um, the, 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 the Queen of, of, the, of, of England is, is going to celebrate her diamond anniversary next May. And this has resulted in the fact that the Prime Minister of the UK has announced that he's not going to go to Rio. And this Rio date has been set for, for years. I think this has been set for three years. Uh, there is a lineup of several thousands of people already lined up and set in the, in the date. I mean, conference rooms are booked, and the entire city is basically booked. And uh, just two days ago, the finance have going to shift the date because of the Queen's diamond anniversary, which is really kind of shows a little bit of the, of the, of the prior, where, the, where, the, where the rural priorities are in terms of national versus, versus rural governments. Uh, which is, yeah, N national interests are different from, from world, uh, world interests. And if, if, if you want to get the, the national players together, we have to go as far as shifting a, a globally announced uh, world summit in order to accommodate for national interests, which, really, which is really interesting in terms of perspectives. Um, I'm going back to the World Business Council of Sustainable Development. Some, a, a report I really recommend you to read. I think it's... Uh, um, I think if you, well, if you Google it under the World Business Council Vision 2050, you'll find it. I think it's under, uh, under panda.org. Uh, it's called the World Living Report, um, or the Living Planet Report, I apologize. But they, again, where they define by 2050, these are the strategies, and I'm not going to bore you, of how we're going to get from business as usual to a sustainable world in 2050. And we basically said, well, business education can, can, can make a difference in there. Uh, education is one of the one of the key ways in order, as key enablers to, to, to build the strategies to get there. Um, if we want to look at the, what future leaders need to, how future leaders need to be different, we're looking basically we, we need to look at the sustainability first. Most education today looks at sustainability on a, on a company level. So, like, what does that mean on a company level? Which is interesting, but it's largely insufficient. If we don't first start at the, at the, at the, from a different perspective and we say, like, what does sustainability mean on a planetary level? What does it mean in terms of environmental concerns, societal concerns, concerns and economic concerns? And what are the strategic implications on a societal level? We are going to not be able to look at even the right questions here at the, at the company level. So we need, to, we, need to, we need to develop leaders with, new, with a new frame of reference and with a new ability to look at the world and look at issues. Unless we, we reframe the dimensions, we're, we're going we're gonna to work on the wrong, wrong issues down here because we've never even taken into account the, 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 bigger, uh, the bigger frame. Um, so this is my unauthorized summary page of my vision. What we said basically is we started with, we started with, a, with a perspective that, uh, that came out of GRLI, Philippe de Wood. Um, framed the, the three main skills for, um, for, for a leader to say like there, he's got three responsibilities. One is leadership, one is entrepreneurship, and the other one is statesmanship. He says we need to have leaders again fluent in these three dimensions. And basically we took a simple approach with our vision. We said business schools need to walk the talk. 
Business schools need to educate leaders that are equi educated on these three dimensions of leadership, entrepreneurship, and statementship. We ourselves need to serve um, using these three dimensions, both in terms of our objectives, and we need to create an organization that is also living up that standard. So every single one of us, <coughs> us as administrators, researchers, but also uh, people who are you know, educators, we need to become leaders and entrepreneurs and statesmen. Now, what, what would that mean? So that's, that's the fundamental ingoing assumption we took. And in terms of the, of the business schools, what we said, well, the, the frame here is the most important or the most valuable contribution. It's the less the words and more the frame. We said, a lot of what we need to do has to do with holding the space. We need to be able to, help, to create and hold a space where things, within which things can happen. <coughs> This is quite important because we as business educators, we believe that we know. Oh, I mean, look, look at how we're set up here. I'm standing here. Um, I can dominate this classroom for until somebody jumps up and tackles me, right? Um, this, is not, this, is, this is not really a discussion. We pretend to do it a little bit that way, but we really pre presume that it's of more value for me to talk here for half an hour and for all of us to even ask ourselves the question of what, we would, what should we actually be discussing. But that's kind of an ingoing assumption. So we said we need to change that. We need to create a frame within which we hold a space where, where learning can happen together. Where we agree that jointly we will go and embark on a, on a journey or an adventure of learning together. And where probably asking the right questions is the bigger challenge than trying to come up with the real answers. Because we have to be able in future to hold the tension of not really knowing the answers anymore. Or just knowing them for long enough to make one step and to reevaluate where we where then are, and to then figure out where we're going to take the next step. And that's a, probably about as good as we, as we will go in future. Now, responsible leadership for a sustainable world, 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 this is what we said is our overall task. We need to deliver leaders, responsible leaders, that look for, as I said, that work towards a sustainable world, but we also need to do that ourselves. We as, we as well need to provide leadership in everything we do, um, uh, so that so that we can walk the talk. And uh, if you look at these three these three uh, objectives, we look here again. We need to take leadership. I think most most fundamentally in terms of what the future, uh, rather than a business school, we're going to call it management school. And this simply for the reason that we, the, the the term management school is broader than business, and it shows that we are we are looking at educating <coughs> leaders and managers in business and beyond business, in other organizations as well. Any, anybody who wants to take organized actions for the world, we should educate. Um, this also means educating, of course, the emerging leaders at the so-called four billion at the bottom of the pyramid that we have largely ignored as business schools. I think they're not, I think the interest, the, the interest or the incomes are not, not as interesting as educating the, the, the one percent. 99% are a lot less uh, interesting to educate. I think that has been our ingoing assumption. I think we need to change that. Um, the way we go about that, we see we need to educate the 99% and we need to transform the 1%. Um, this is the, the 99 to 1% concept is, I think, clear for, for everybody, right? But this Occupy Wall Street has, thank God, uh, put, our, put our nose into that very nicely. Uh, our key priority being educating and transforming globally responsible leaders, again, Transforming the one percent, educating the ninety-nine percent. Um, that as our leadership objectives in terms of, uh, of, of entrepreneurship, we say like we, we need to go beyond what we've done in terms of business. If you ask business, and we've done some some global stakeholder review um, uh, surveys on this, business and business schools have a totally different perspective of how useful business schools are to business. Business schools think that we are very useful to business. Business don't think we are very relevant to them. Right? So we need, to, we need to change that. We need to, we need to start adding value to them in a, in a relevant way. And actually, we've got a big, 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 big opportunity because I think it's 85% of CEOs today say that they don't know how to come up with sustainability strategies in their companies. They don't know how to implement sustainability. If we figure that out and we can help them work with them towards creating sustainability strategies to create common shared values, in the, in the organizations, we really have a role to play. But that means that we have to do a few things quite differently in terms of how we research and, and work. So enabling uh, organ business organizations to serve the common good uh, would be our entrepreneurship um, uh, uh, initiative. 
and then ourselves in terms of statementship, shaping the agenda for public debates to transform the economic system. This is a high order. Basically, we're saying, wouldn't it be fabulous if this, again, this, uh, this square, this border, if we could become the favorite meeting place for public debates, if, if the stakeholders that care about the, the big issues of this world, again, in terms of sustainability, and environmental, societal, and economic, would actually come to the future management school in order to, uh, to discuss that. Wouldn't that be a role for us to have? Yeah? So from now, I'm just going to go into a little bit of details if I still have, do I still have time? Still have time? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Okay, great. It's wonderful. So that's about two minutes per, okay, excellent. Um, so I'm going to go into the, the, three, uh, the three points. Um, the, in order to, the underlying assumption, I'm, I'm going to spend one of the minutes uh, on, on what does the future leader look like. Um, we say unless there is a fundamental shift in his um, consciousness, in his awareness, we're not going to get there. We don't need to start educating anything on any dimension, um, on, in, in any dimension in, ter in terms of leadership, if we don't start with a reflective awareness. Um, what does that mean? That really has to do with humility, humanity. It has to do with, with uh, ethics, with values. It has to do with how he looks at himself and at the world. What is his, what is his relationship and his assumptions that he takes in the way he manages himself, his environment, and the world at large? So, this really requires a, a different ingoing, uh, ingoing assumption in terms of educating leaders. We need to start with the human. And if we don't start with the human, we can forget the rest. Um, Harvard Business School puts more people in prison than anybody else in the world. And we really need to stop doing that. Right? I mean, we don't want to all become like Harvard. Otherwise, we're all walking in the wrong direction. Um, sustainable, responsible leadership, sustainable entrepreneurship, enlightened statementship, I'm, rep I'm repeating them again. Um, there's a, a, a whole bunch of, uh, I think I've got about a page of adjectives behind each of them. I'm not going to go in there because it's, my minute is too short for that. But uh, these are the dimensions around which we will educate future, future leaders. Um, and how are we going to get there? We, we believe we need different strategies or different enabling strategies to get there. One of them, which has very much to do with the, uh, developing the leader in the in the, in the, in the or the human in the leader and the leader in the human is through transformative learning. Transformative learning has much to do with um, whole person <coughs> learning, um, uh, person-centered learning, and, and so forth, which is really, which is creating a, what we call an on-court experience. So rather than talking about leaders in the third person, we need to create an environment where somebody can experience being a leader and reflecting and learning from that. So a, a different, totally different learning approach. This, uh, this, this, this will not happen in, a, in an auditorium like that. Um, Issue-centered learning is uh, probably the second biggest, big, big element in there. Issue-centered learning means that we will, in future, not teach market. There will not be a marketing class. There will not be a finance class or a strategy and an HR class. There will be a class on how to solve climate, uh, climate change, how to address hunger, how to deal with poverty, um, what to do with ocean acidification and so forth. And then we will invite stakeholders in that discussion, together with students, and look at, OK, so what are the big questions we should ask ourselves? What are some alternative strategies that are coming up? Break it into team sessions, look at them, and only bring in the experts in terms of, uh, of accounting and finance and, and, and marketing and so forth, as the issue is ripe enough that we're looking at the solutions to bring in the, the, that, that knowledge. So, Turning, turning teaching around from functional approach to, a, to an issue-centered um, approach. Um, Question-based learning. We believe that good education is enabling students to ask good questions. That's actually quite an art. It's not as easy as it sounds. Um, developing good questions, is, as, as US researchers know this, is extremely difficult. Uh, we believe we should become a lot better in that. Um, the third one is reflective fieldwork. Um, we've, we've looked at fieldwork a little bit before. I mean, this is really an evolution of the, of the Harvard case study method where we say we need to go into, into the field. We need to get our hands dirty. Um, one of the key elements for us in terms of fieldwork is to make sure we reflect on it. 
it's not, it's not just that we go, but, but, but that it is an accompanied process where we look at what, what, what we have learned for ourselves in the interaction, what are the entrepreneurial skills that we have developed, and so forth. Um, the, the second big object, objective, enabling organizations to serve the, the common good, um, has to do with basically three ingoing assumptions. Business needs to develop business solutions for a sustainable world. Uh, that's their contribution. We need to help them to develop a much, much better and much more pro pragmatic ways to measure this new performance. This has all to do with making the triple bottom line measurable and concrete. It's, it's, we're still not there. Uh, there, there. I think every company has their own interpretation of how they measure the triple bottom line. It's, it's hardly possible to compare it within an industry, not to talk about um, uh, across industries. And I think one of the roles we can play is around specifying professional and ethical standards. There are some talks about um, disqualifying graduates from schools that break, um, um, that, don't, that don't live up to the ethical conduct or code of conduct that we have. There's some, um, there, I think there's a couple of students at Yale who have um, gone to prison for inside trading. And uh, the discussion among the alumni is we should take their degree away. And I think there is an interesting debate that business schools can have in terms of what does it take for, for us to keep and main, to get, maintain and keep a degree? And we haven't really gone very far there. There's a whole debate that we can start having our, ourselves. It's really a tricky debate because how are you going to measure and who determines what? But there's not an easy answer to this necessarily. Uh, this very clearly needs a lot of alumni in, uh, involvement to figure that out. But I think there we, could, there we could play a little bit more of a role. As you know, in any other profession, law and medicine are good examples where in order to keep your business, your license to operate. You need to go through annual training. You need to, you need to continue to develop yourself professionally <coughs> in business once you have graduated. Off you go. And uh, you're not really required. You're, it is up to you to decide to what degree you want to continue your, your, uh, your personal le learning. The three enabling companies is that the company leaders in their development, and this really has much to do with the lifelong learning, work to get, together with the so-called corporate universities and making sure that we, we, we accompany the leader across his stages of development. And with stages of development, there's really what we make is a, a differentiation around, around four different dimensions. It starts off with uh, awareness, creating awareness for a new topic. Then it goes into, as awareness evolves, it, it turns into actionable um, knowledge, knowledge that you can act on. The th these two levels is really where, what business schools have mostly focused on, and they confused it by calling it knowledge transfer. They believe that they can create awareness, which is true to some degree, and actionable knowledge, which is questionable, by, transfer, by transferring knowledge. Now, there's three other levels towards mastery. One is then guided application. What you have learned, you need to, you need to guide in the application, which has to do with the reflective field work that we mentioned. Um, uh, independent application and eventually skilled performance. You've, not, you've, you've realized that in your own uh, professional development as you go from learning something new to becoming a master in, in that skill. There are these different phases and we believe that the business school can, really has, a, has more opportunity in the, in, the, in the upper three levels of mastery than, than, than it has had in the, in the bottom two uh, um, levels of mastery. Um, so boarding organization with transdisciplinary sustainability strategy, I've talked a little bit about that. This is probably where Business schools can become a lot more relevant to business. Um, this will require a different kind of research. Um, and we, we, we come up with a new term that we call collaborators. collaboratories. This is a collaborative learning platform for action and research. It's an impossibly long word. Um, this, this has much to do, again, it's kind of an extension of what we talked before about the issue-centered learning. Now imagine a place. Um, where, you, where students, researchers, and stakeholders meet around issues to address them, where, where education and research meet in order to jointly come up with, with, with future-oriented work um, and, and, and approaches that then businesses can use. So this is, there's a lot that education and research wouldn't be as far away as they are today in terms of, in terms of um, edu business schools. Um, we find, it, we find there is very li little relevance of, of the work that researchers do that is, can be found in the classroom. It's not an exactly direct uh, application. And there's very little that happens in the classroom that research uses. 
for good reasons probably, because what, the what is done in the classroom is not that relevant today. If you would set all of this up differently, that would change. Uh, lastly, shaping the agenda for public debates in the, in the to transform the economic system. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to limit myself to one example. I'm not sure whether you followed, but um, the Economics 101 class at Harvard has walked out of the classroom two days ago. I don't know whether you followed that. Um, and they joined um, Occupy, I don't know what the Occupy Wall Street equivalent in Boston is, but they walked out and said, what you teach us in, uh, in Economics 101 is totally irrelevant. We refuse and walked out. 700 students, massive. Okay? And I'm kind of, I was kind of following up what happens at my business school, and I was hoping they would walk out as well, but they haven't. So I'm not, I'm not very happy. Because <laughs> there is so much power in this. And we said, well, you know, if, imagine now that um, you would actually dare to go and get your faculty together from different fields, not just the economists, because I think the economists are the most, are probably the least likely to be able to address this question. Because... They, they, it's always very difficult to think differently if you're in the field. It's a little bit like us and, and coming up with a new vision in, in business education. We're in there. It's very diff difficult for us to think differently. But if you would bring in professors, much as if you would, if you would take all of, all of us here and we would set up you know, an, uh, a, web, a web seminar and uh, start talking with students all over the world and take some questions in terms of, so what would it, what would it take to teach economics for a sustainable world? It would be very interesting to kind of dialogue that we would generate and the kind of learning that would happen and the, the learning journey that would happen as a result. That, this is, I guess, a little bit what we are, what we are looking here when we, look, when we say we need, to, we need to assume our statesmanship in terms of education. We need to, we need to get dialogues going. We need, to let, we need to get the right questions out. And then we need to start jointly working together to find the right answers. Um, oh, I've got this the wrong way around. Excellent. Um, we need to get to a research agenda that serves the common good. Um, we should challenge ourselves to, become, to go, get back to what used to be a very known quantity, the public intellectuals. We used to have some great public intellectuals. We don't have them anymore. Um, and we need to open up the borders between academia and practice. That's probably the most painful one for business schools because we so proudly have our, our, our faculty that is so, hmm, um, so nicely kept away and isolated from, from practice. We should, we, should make that, we should enable a dance. We should have practitioners who come into business schools to reflect on their professional experience. We should have our business school faculty working in any organization of any, of any type in the world and apply what they've learned and, and really enable this, this movement back and forth to make sure that we have eventually at any point in the business school and outside a mixture of both. So make this a lot more fluent. And with this, I think my eight minutes are... You still have about three minutes here. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Great. Excellent. I can, can you see, can see what happens? You can create time. You spend time, then you have more time. This is fantastic. Um, design the future of management school. If I have time, I'll go a little bit into that. This again goes back to this uh, holding the space. And my, <laughs> it's very interesting how they don't pop up in the right order. That's really my mistake. Um, this is really, again, brand new. But we said, how are we going to go about designing that new school? And um, very clearly, we have uh, our oldest contributor to this. It's a gentleman called Philippe de Wood, who is a Belgian, who I think is an advisor to the, what do you have in, print, in Belgium, the prince? Somebody? King. The king? Yeah, I think he's an advisor to the king. He's 82 years old. Not the king, but Philippe de Wood. And um, the king, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Um, and he says very famously at 82, I think, uh, he's getting more radical, he says, we need to burn them down, the business schools, in order to, to build new ones. And actually, I think he's quite right. I think uh, it's very difficult. Business schools have, have it a lot more difficult than any business to transform themselves. We have created ourselves rules and regulations and structures in such a way that we can hardly change. So what we may have to do is we, we may have to build new ones. And uh, one of the things that we're going to ask for in Rio is we're going we're gonna to create a $200 million fund where we will create five new business schools, one in every continent, and try and create lighthouse institutions and try and lift this vision in, in, five, in five places across the world, plus one virtual school where we'll educate for free the, the four billion that, uh, 
at the so-called bottom of the pyramid, where probably the most urgent need uh, is for developing emerging leaders and entrepreneurs. Um, we need to create a structure that serves the vision. So we need to, and what do we mean with that? We need to ask anybody who works in a business school, so a researcher, a faculty member, an educator, so in terms of faculty, research and education, but also us as administrators and the staff, in which way do we contribute to these three strategies? In which ways do we actually contribute to either educating uh, globally responsible leaders? How do we make sure that we enable business to serve the common good or assume our role as statementship? And we need to create, motive, we need to create hiring, promotion and reward systems that follow that logic and not the other way around. Um, we need to create a new generation of teachers and researchers. This is really quite a challenge as well. Um, creating a new generation of researchers is easier than retraining the mass of existing researcher, researchers and teachers. Because if you want to be able to suddenly go, so, so far we've, we've taught researchers that we want them to go is narrow and deep. In the future we want, to go to, we want them to go broad and fast and future oriented. That's really a challenge. Um, it's very much a challenge for, the, for people who have been in the system. You, you would know that. Um, how do you go from training somebody who has done what I'm doing here, lecturing, to create a learning environment? It's a massive training for the person. You take the, you take the person out of their comfort zone by a long stretch. How do you go about that? Really big challenge. And then you need to find out a new way to measure success. This has much to do with ranking systems. Um, uh, many, more, many, many business schools um, adapt their programs in order to look good in the FT ranking because that's a relevant ranking. Um, if, you, if you do that, you really, you really care to, very, to a very limited degree only about the education of, of globally responsible leaders and you, you care very much to being published in A-plus journals that they have listed and decided on. Very, um, very, very difficult. You will hire, if you want to do well in the FT ranking, you will hire mostly people who will afterwards go and, and take on consulting jobs. You will not take on people who start their own businesses because in order, in order to make the, to prove that the salary increase of your graduates is there, graduates is there, they need to go only into certain prof professions and not others. Uh, accreditation standards this is pretty much the same thing as well. Um, uh, Equus and AACSP, the, the big uh, institutional accreditation standards, they, uh, they really prevent us from doing what we've just, what we've just talked about. And we, we, have them very, we hold them very closely involved in, in our debate, so it should, it should be interesting to see to what degree they're, they're willing to adapt. Um, I've got a little bit of a stakeholder um, review that I, that I did, and I'm going to use the last minute that I still have. Um, I wanted to share two slides with you. This is just a promise that it's all over nearly. Two slides. Um, we went out and we talked to um, about 200 stake stakeholders. Um, students, alumni, business people, consultants, people who call themselves um, concerned citizens. Um, we still, unfortunately, we couldn't, we couldn't avoid having about 25% of business school professors in there as well. It just spread and we couldn't keep them from responding and we have them in here. We could have taken uh, their perspective out. Uh, and we asked a bunch of questions in terms of research priorities for the future that I wanted to share with you as, an, as, a, as a closing remark for or to set off the next two days. Um, what should management re uh, research focus on? 47% of the people said it should focus on resolving societal issues. It should resolve on global issues. Global, global issues is a, is a term that was very much used with environmental um, uh, questions, global environmental questions. It, 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 should, it should address interdisciplinary research in business and transdisciplinary issues in business and beyond, so uh, um, other stakeholders. Um, so really, I think this is, these, are the, these, are the, these are the important ones. I think we do hardly anything of that except our research two days here, so I'm really thrilled to be here. I think this is exactly a, the thing we should be doing, and I think uh, it's, you know, it's fantastic for everybody to be here and to actually work on that and think around, around these lines. Because that is really where the future will be, exactly the topic. You have chosen a topic and you're organizing around a topic. I think this is really a, an example of, of, how, of how the future can and should look like. How should management research be conducted in a, 
in an interdisciplinary way, in a transdisciplinary way, and action research based. Very different from how we do it today. At least maybe not everybody who is here, but the other 95% of the people who do research who are not here. Um, who should management research be done for? And I would just like to draw your attention to this small percentage here. Only 12% of our dear stakeholders tell us that we should do research for ourselves, publishing in peer peer-reviewed journals. And say like, what you really should take care of is the, is, the, is the stakeholders to help us solve the problems we don't even know, we don't even start to know how, how we should address them. Um, talk to business practitioners, also something that we are not very good at in business schools. Um, no practitioner reads what we write, because we don't really write for them. Um, and what should be key topics? I think that's that list over there that could be, that could be interesting as well. How to make business responsible and sustainable, 72%. How to develop globally responsible leaders, 65%. The role of business and its responsibility towards consumers, society, and the planet, 63%. We're, we're, we're really uh, very amazed with these results. New measures for economic, social, and environmental effectiveness of business, 59%. And the role of business leaders in resolving global issues. This is what they want. I'm not trying to say this is necessarily representative, but this is the little research we've done, and uh, it is one that very much serves us, so we use it like you do as well, as you, as you know well. If you find a result that, that pleases you, you use it, right? And I hope that, uh, that this uh, encourages, uh, or serves as, a, as an encouragement for the research. Um, I hope what I said was of interest, was, was radical. I know it's probably more radical to me and, my, me and myself and us here than, than you probably all think that we should have thought, we should have figured this out, out uh, a century ago. But uh, I hope it helped and I hope these, uh, these, these questions serve as an invitation to, for the next two days. Yeah? And as a closing remark, I think there is more, more to life than A-plus journal articles. <laughs> Thanks.